Yo, what is good, everybody? It is your boy, Golden Golden Falls, Golden What Ifs, whatever you want to call me, and I am back. This is What If Deku Had a Spartan Quirk, and uh, shout out to the homie Emmett. Um, he doesn't really have, like, links or, like, YouTube links, and if he if he does, I'll, I'll eventually add them in the description as well, but um, shout out to him for making the thumbnail. I needed uh, some help with making some thumbnails and getting um, a couple videos ready to go uh, for the near future, so he was able to help me out and slide me a couple thumbnails. With that said, though, I hope you all enjoy the video. Like I said before in the previous one, I'm probably going to try out a little bit different of a style today um, in terms of the what if. And this what if will be in a slightly different style um, in terms of a pacing. But with that said, I don't want to waste much more of your time because I want to just get right into the what if. So let's get it. Azuka Midoriya is now in the world of My Hero Academia where quirks are or quartz run rampant and many many people have powers ranging from looking like a washing machine to basically being able to shoot explosions out of your body now azuku midoriya was always a rowdy kid and for the fact is he was always a rowdy kid he is very rowdy he's very um kind of you know out there he's he just he's always super aggressive and rowdy just from the ages like you know from when he was born to at the age of about four and there would be a reason for this because soon he would go see the doctor and he would go see the doctor with his mother, of course, and they would learn that he has a special type of quirk. And this quirk would be deemed a Spartan quirk. A Spartan quirk has many, many different things, but the easiest way to explain it is that Izuku is very similar to a Spartan. Now, there's a, a lot of question marks when you, when you say stuff like that. But it kind of explains why he's so aggressive, why he's not timid at all. He's very, uh, he's very outward and confident. Azuku is just ready to go at all times. Like he is completely and utterly ready. But on top of that, he's still got the aspects of him that is like a student of this game, a student of being a hero. So he is still pretty damn intelligent in terms of researching and finding new things out and doing this or doing that or studying different heroes he still does all of those things as well but on top of that he has this spartan quirk but like i said there's very little to be known about this quirk and the doctor even says that it seems that he has um kind of different type of muscle growth it seems like he'll probably have a little bit of extra strength and uh, maybe a little bit extra speed and stuff like that but he literally doesn't know anything else so he tells him that he's gonna have to kind of deal throughout life here trying to learn um what his quirk can truly do in which azuku doesn't have a problem with this and his mother is thinking that well the kid's already aggressive the kid's already like you know super confident and and he wants to get into trouble from time to time maybe give him a little bit of discipline and um that would be really good for him so that's what she's going to do she decides that the best thing for for her to do for azuku is to probably put him in some sort of martial arts. And that's exactly what she actually does for a while. All the way up until he's, well, you know, of age of, you know, around 15. He's in martial arts. He trains with different weapons. And he learns to kind of center himself a little bit. But he still controls or he still has that good bit of anger. And that good bit of just pride. It seems like Azuku is very, very prideful. He's outward with his pride as well, and he's always, always passionate about everything that he cares about, and that includes stuff like fighting, that includes stuff like hero work, in terms of the hero studies that he does put himself through. But throughout this time, he trains, he works hard, and his quirk continues to show more and more. I mean, nobody's gonna mess with this version of Izuku. No one's gonna mess with this version of Deku. At the end of the day, they would be terrified of him because if Bakugo, if someone tries to bully him, well, let's just say they get beat down pretty damn bad and they will not be making any mistakes ever again. And Izuku is just flat out shows every single person that you don't mess with him, that you don't even touch him and you don't even rub him the wrong way because, well, if you do, I mean, he will put you on the ground in a matter of seconds. And he shows this to Bakugo when Bakugo tries to kind of assert his quote unquote dominance in a way where he's kind of just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to 
I'm gonna fight this guy and he's not gonna do anything about it you know he's weak like he doesn't have a normal quirk like I have a quirk that shoots explosions but Izuku's just full-on durability when Bakugo tries to cheap shot him one day especially around the age of about 14 or maybe about 15 that he would try to cheap shot him and it would not go very well not one freaking bit because Izuku would tank the explosion and it seems as if Izuku would just get stronger from tanking that explosion, walking forward and slamming Bakugo into the ground, and then jumping, landing one boot on Bakugo's chest as, as if it's some Spartan-like slam. And it is kind of brutal to see because everyone stands around as Bakugo tries to grasp for air, but Izuku lets go of him and tells them that he'll be fine, that he'll be getting his air back in about 10 seconds. After 10 seconds would pass, that's exactly what would happen. He would just get his air back, just like that. And it would be pretty crazy that he was able to not only predict when Bakugo would, you know, be able to breathe again, but also the fact that he did not at all care that Bakugo attacked him, but he definitely made it known that it was, or it was going to have consequences at the end of the day. And that's exactly what Izuku showed. Now, he would go through the whole, you know, teacher says uh, that they want to be heroes or, or heroes and stuff like that. And it, it was a pretty basic day. And Azuku would just be kind of doing his normal studying, looking about his, his combat tactics, looking at various different heroes that he could model his, his fighting style after. And even thinks to himself that he would really love to have actual weaponry and utilize actual weaponry in well the act of being a hero he knows that you're not supposed to kill and you're not supposed to hurt or you're not supposed to at least you know end the lives of certain people but at the same time azuku is like you know what I, I mean i'm gonna do what needs to be done to protect those who are behind me to protect those that are in need and azuku is showing that pride that he's going to be the strongest even if he can't necessarily end lives of different villains but that's beyond the point. But he continues to study these things as school goes along and along and along. And eventually, well, he would head out. He would head out of, of the school and he would be studying through his books. And he would be writing things down that he feels could be beneficial. In which when he's walking under a, well, a tunnel of some sorts or going through a tunnel of some sorts. It seems that some random kind of goob or ra random glob of something like a slime or well what we know as the sludge villain would appear out of nowhere azuka would look to his side immediately grabbing something that is kind of like a lid of a trash can and he's he bangs his arm on that lid as vibrations would spread across the tunnel and he would look toward the sludge villain telling him that if he dares step past that this right here will be his his undoing in which Azuku would stand his ground as the sludge villain would tell him that he's going to take his body charging forward, but the sludge villain would ring extremely, extremely bad, would would ring out in pain and would yell out in pain as Azuku would slam the, the shield-like item, but it's more of like a trash can lid on the sludge villain, hitting it and the vibrations would bounce off of the entire area, stopping, uh, stopping the, well, you know, the sludge villain in its tracks instantly like flat out like flat out instantly just stops him in his tracks the sludge villain would splatter um, almost everywhere with only a small bit of him left as it charges or the rest of it charges at azuku and azuku slams on the trash can lid once again as the vibrations would sound bouncing off the area and it's as if azuku is is getting stronger and stronger throughout this time and it's something that is terrifying for well the sludge villain eventually the villain is in pieces and all might would come up thinking that the villain would still be there and would actually throw a punch saying detroit smash as the wind pressure itself would go to basically strike azuku but azuku would stand his ground and he would block it with his with his well shield but it's more like a trash can like i said or trash can lid blocking it entirely 
and All Might is in complete shock. I mean, sorry, kid, like he didn't mean to actually hit him, but Izuku would brush him off, saying that it's really no worries, that he'll help him clean this up, and then he can go about his day normally. And it is an honor to meet someone as, you know, renowned as him, and saying that All Might has been a great inspiration to many, even, even though his, uh, well, you know, his fight style is a little bit not very technical and it's not the best way he could definitely approach actually ut utilizing the power he really has in which all might looks at him and thinks well i mean this kid knows what he's talking about like it's pretty obvious that the kid is pretty smart especially being somebody like him in which he would ask um if he's a new hero or something like that but azuku says that no he's actually not even in hero school yet in which all might would be shocked saying that he looks like a grown man Azuku looks at his arms and his body and he says, well, honestly, I haven't even really thought about that, but um, I guess I do kind of look older than most of my classmates. And he's like, you know what? That makes a lot of sense and makes makes a lot of sense why um, all the females are kind of, you know, very weird around him, you could say. But Azuku kind of just shrugs it off and says that he'll be going out to UA High School in uh, about 10 months ish. And he tells him that he's excited to see what he'll be able to do against some of the other up-and-coming heroes or up-and-coming students that want to be heroes. In which, well, let's just say All Might tells him, hey kid, like, you're going to do a great job. I mean, I can definitely tell. And, he'll, or, and All Might tells him that he'll actually be teaching there very soon. So he hopes to teach the kids something. But from what he sees right now, it seems like the kid already has a pretty good grasp on what the hell is going on in general so he's sure that they that he won't really need that much help at least from uh from him but still he says that he is going to be uh helping out to the best of his abilities or helping out where he can that is for sure azuku after you know some time of course would go about his training regimen over the next uh like 10 months and he would study and stuff like that. All, all the good stuff that he has to get done um, leading up into the UA entrance exam. And he would be, well, really well prepared. He would even get clearance that he would be allowed to use weaponry since he's so skilled with it. And basically, since he has the full capabilities of utilizing it, he is told as long as he doesn't, you know, hurt any students or anything, he should be good for the foreseeable future. But um, in terms of actual hero work in the future, he probably won't be able to use any lethal weapons, any weapons with extremely sharp tips uh, or something like that, or at least not until he's a full fledged hero. Um, but for the most part in training and stuff like that, he definitely can use it. And if, if we're talking about, you know, simple stuff or, you know, simple weaponry, uh, he could probably utilize it in the uh, act of being a hero. But for now, blunt weapons would definitely be more beneficial. In which Azuku says, or kind of understands, that he is um, pretty damn efficient with a bow staff on top of it. So he should be okay at the end of the day. He can use the bow staff similar to a, uh, a spear. And also he could utilize a shield as well since that is not lethal. Now, this would lead, after all the training, would lead him to the UA entrance exam. And at the start of the UA entrance exam, you have the normal written portion. The written portion is pretty basic. He's able to answer some questions, get through that pretty um, easily. And the UA entrance exam would involve the defeating of a large amount of robots. Azuku would take his shield and also his spear and would actually even be approached by someone by the name of Tenya Ida saying that he shouldn't be allowed to utilize those things. But Azuku says he has full clearance and he should really mind his own damn business because, well, don't jump in his business or he's about to get hit in the face like right now in which Tenya would be pretty shocked that the guy just threatened him but Izuku slams his spear on the ground and tells him enough is enough and just focus on what he needs to focus on Azuku would then await the gates to open and as they do he would go charging out in a complete blitz of speed it's as if it's some spartan charge he has a shield in front spear in front of him or it's shield in front and then spear pointing forward and he would charge through 
robot after robot. The spear seem seemingly even stronger than what he thought, and it seems as if the uh, the sharpness of the spear isn't even really what matters very much. It seems like his connection to the weapon allows him to kind of do as he wish, and as brutal as he wants to destroy a robot, he can do exactly like that. But he can also be a little bit more tame with his with his um, weaponry, seemingly adding a little bit of bluntness so it doesn't you know completely tear through whatever he touches. For the most part, though. He just does a Spartan charge through many of the robots, but he still is pretty limited in terms of how he gets to each robot. So it's not like he would, you know, get some insane, insane score right off the bat. But what really makes it the difference is this. The difference is when somebody was on the ground, somebody was hurt. Well, let's just say Azuku sees this as a chance to protect somebody, taking his shield, going over to the girl that's on the ground by the name of Ochaku Uraka, and as the Zero Point robot walks forward about to crush them, well, Azuku would put, it, put his shield up, and he would slam his spear on the shield, and it's as if he's signaling for more strength, signaling for more power, and as the robot would go to stomp on him, he would put the shield on, his, on the foot of the robot, and he would say, this is for Sparta, as he pushes off the shield, slinging the giant robot backwards, and as it slams to the ground, Azuku would come jumping in, slamming its, his spear right into the main circuitry of the robot, disabling the zero-point robots. He would rip the spear out of the robot and slam his shield once again, as it seems as if this aura, this, like, reddish kind of aura would kind of steam off of him and everybody would be in shock about what's happening and what he's capable of doing but Azuku is very loud and boisterous about what he just got done but soon he would go over help the girl up bring her to to recovery girl and just leave her there before she could even say thank you before she can even thank him in general or say a word he is gone he doesn't care about a thank you he's just there to protect and to also absolutely dominate like and that's what he did and he doesn't really know these people very well and doesn't know her like at all so it's not like he's going to be all buddy buddy or anything like that he hasn't really met anybody that he wants to be good friends with or you know build a crew with or even build kind of like um kind of like his own like you know group of of people that would be his quote-unquote army in some way right he doesn't really care about all that and he hasn't really been around anybody that makes it makes him feel as if this would be a good person to bring into the friend group now or bring into kind of like that soldier's platoon type of uh, mindset or that soldier's kind of um, army type of mindset. Now, with that said, we have an Azuku Midoriya who finishes up the UA entrance exam and he gets a pretty damn high score for it. And um, actually, it, you know, All Might would even tell him that he wouldn't, originally wouldn't have gotten um, the highest score in the exam, but there was a hidden portion being that of the hero portion of the exam or the rescue portion of the exam in which he got quite a few points because of this. And it's pretty crazy that he's able to get so many points from this specifically because he had, you know, a good amount of points through just destroying robots, but he got a ton through rescuing that girl. And which Azuku does realize, like, hey, that makes a lot of sense, right? Like rescuing and protecting, it's all part of the job as well. It's not just breaking and destroying robots like that's ridiculous protecting is a big part of the job and he was able to do so in a pretty efficient way this would then lead azuku to actually being the number one student but just by a little bit like i said he wasn't the best at destroying robots he fell a little bit behind because his speed may be lacking just a little bit at this moment but in the future that could all change massively but he was able to do it because of well you know, his ability to actually protect, leading him to being the number one student in the exam and also leading him to, well, going on to UA and being in or being in class 1A. And this would be perfect. His first day of class 1A or, or UA high school in class 1A 
would begin and Izuku would head in and he would be very serious. He would be very focused, completely and utterly locked in. He's not really thinking about what other people are doing. Shoot, even Bakugo would come in and try to like, you know, get his goat and like, you know, try to say things to him. But Izuku is not having any of it. He tells Bakugo he better remember the last time he started messing with him because last time he started messing with him, well, it didn't end very well for him. So just keep that in mind. And he should probably stay away from actually conflicting with him. And it'd probably be the best for both of them. And that includes the safety of Bakugo and obviously Izuku not getting expelled and stuff like that. Now, Aizawa would show up and we would have the normal interaction and so on about so-called, uh, you know, that they're going, oh yeah, aren't we supposed to have orientation and stuff? But no, nah, Aizawa's like, no, we're not doing all that. We're not doing it. We're gonna, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to test your quirks. And that's exactly what happens, right? Azuku isn't going to be amazing at every single thing. Um, or, I mean, he's not going to be amazing at one thing specifically or anything like that. Like, his ball throw is going to be pretty damn strong. But it's not going to be to the point of, like, something insane. Like, Bakugo will beat him in the ball throw. But everything else, like, all together is something that is pretty damn good, right? The sprint. Azuku would just do something he calls a Spartan leap and he'll leap from one end to the other actually faster than really anybody could actually, you know, run or sprint after him with and he would just leap across and Azuku would easily and I mean easily get um, one of one of the higher scores in that portion of the exam. Maybe the only person that would be faster than him might be Tenya Ida, but that leap is no freaking joke. He could leap across that that area and that 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 kind of, you know, that sequence very easily. And there's a lot of things that he would continue to show off and do better than a lot of people at. But he would kind of, you know, he would he would waver from rank maybe one to rank five, depending on the scenario. His side steps were pretty good. The the grip strength, he's pretty damn strong. You know, most of the things he does really well at. And maybe he's not getting number one at every single turn, but he's doing really well at every single time or every single thing. So if he doesn't get number one, he's definitely getting in the top three. Like, there's no joke about that, but there's a good chance just from his overall rankings, just every ranking, every single one being really good placement, he probably would end up being the number one, quote unquote. Even when some people would think like, wow, it feels like Azuku wasn't at the top of really anything, but he was pretty damn good at everything, right? Like he was pretty damn good at most things that they were able to do. So, of course, he would be safe from expulsion, which that's the whole thing. But Aizawa would kind of just threaten it without actually threatening it. Like, he probably would expel someone like Hagakure, but then just bring her back right after. So, it would be pretty basic. Then we would lead into the, the next situation or the next day. And that would be, well, training with All Might. And that training with All Might is a very basic one. But it's something that Azuku probably is decently excited about. Izuku hears that it's heroes versus villains training, so he's actually going to be able to take on some of his fellow classmates, which is something that is going to be decently interesting. I mean, at the end of the day, this sounds pretty damn cool to, to take on some of your classmates and, you know, do uh, like train against them and stuff like that. So when he gets on his, um, his hero outfit, which his hero outfit would be very Spartan-like, donning some armor and also a shield and also a long bow staff being that he doesn't want to utilize uh, an actual spear for the most part uh, because he doesn't want to like you know maim, maim somebody so he sticks with the bow staff and he as he's moving around and feeling the shield and stuff like that he would slam the the bow staff on the shield or excuse me would slam the bow, bow staff on the shield and he would feel like wow this is this feels good this feels solid like i feel strong and ready to go and azuku would just get ready for his turn at the whole heroes versus villains being that the hero team would be him and and ochako and then the villains would be tenya ida and bakugo now the ex explanation of this is pretty damn basic heroes need to touch the bomb and then they win the villains need to stall them out for five minutes or capture both both the heroes and then they win now, Azuku is a pretty good strategist and gives a decent plan to Ochako, 
but even tells her like hey don't take a fight that you that you feel that you can't actually win don't take any unnecessary risks there's no point fight with him and they're going to win and he doesn't mean that in any prideful or cocky way he means that that they are now a team that they are a a duo of warriors that they will work together it doesn't matter who's the strongest or the weakest they're only as strong as their leakest wink but they are strongest together if their links don't get you know pushed away so the exercise would start and and azuku immediately says stick with him and stick close and as they as they walk toward the staircase he hears bakugo charge forward and azuku slams on his shield as bakugo comes spiraling down with explosions in which azuku would shield bash him immediately into a wall and and ochako would would tap him floating him in the air and Azuku would jump up and slam Bakugo into the ground, and she immediately would use the capture tape to to knock Bakugo out of this out of this uh, this drill or the the training session, in which Ochako says that 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 was insane, like to the point where it felt as if she could coordinate with him without even thinking, like their moves were in sync entirely, in which Azuku kind of says that a good team will always be that way. And maybe that has something to do with his quirk. He would even tell her that they'll talk more about this after after the drill, but they'll just keep working together and they'll they'll end this uh, heroes versus villains training quicker than you could possibly imagine. And when they when they meet up with Tenya Ida, let's just say the same thing or very, something very similar would happen as well. They would they would approach Tenya in perfect unison, um, narrowing him down to a corner of the room. And get any she gets shield bashed into the side of the wall and gets gets floated up and then pinned to the ground and immediately is captured once again. And in a matter of about 35 to 40 seconds, Azuku and Ochako are the winners. But there's something weird about this. Ochako even says that his quirk must be doing something else. Normally, when she utilizes her quirk, she gets dizzy, she gets groggy, she she feels horrible, like she's gonna throw up. In which Azuku hears her out and and he is, he says that maybe it has something to do with his quirk. I mean, seriously, uh, the idea is maybe he um he he's really good at working with other people and maybe it enhances their quirks. He's not 100% sure, or maybe it kind of nullifies some of the drawbacks. In which Azuku thinks about this for a little bit and tells her that that must be it. The, the, the doctor kind of weirdly called this a Spartan quirk, and that was kind of like the way um, he would do it because Azuku act very similar to a prideful Spartan. But maybe it's even further than they thought. Maybe Azuku's idea of being a Spartan is even more than anybody could imagine because Azuku's Spartan quirk might actually even affect those around him as long as they're all working together and in unison like an army or like like someone that is ready to duel right someone that is a partner maybe it's a trio maybe it's a quad maybe it's a duo anything and it seems like azuku benefits all of them for just being there in which ochako hears this and frankly this is a conversation that needs to be talked about later at least more and more because i mean this could be one of the greatest quirks ever for being um somebody who works together in which azuku nods and says that he agrees he never thought about his quirk this way he's only thought about it in in a solo fashion maybe someone who can um fight by himself someone who is strong by himself he's never thought of it any other way but now thinking of it like this it's very interesting so they would end their drill and of course they would head up back or head back up to all might everybody would talk for a little bit and they would watch the other people um do their thing and eventually the day would then be over and this would lead them into their next training like session, which their next training session or kind of training drill type of thing would involve rescue training or the USJ. The USJ is made for rescue and made for the facilitation of learning how to rescue people from specific situations. Now, what they don't know is that these students are going to walk into something that they never thought would happen in the first place. 
because when they're all on the bus right over there when they're all talking chatting and saying certain things to each other you know asking whose quirks the best and this and that in which ochako backs the idea completely backs the idea of azuku being the strongest even explaining that his quirk has some sort of passive ability that allows him to work better with teammates which is a wild thing in which most of them would say like well they don't know if that's even true i mean seriously they're kind of just taking their word for it but azuku says that one-on-one -on -one, and flat out says it straight up that one-on-one -on -one, nobody is going to be able to take him on not even close and he says the only person that would be somewhat of an issue would be the one over there in which he would point at shoto todoroki saying that dealing with the ice would be a, a difficult thing but he's broken through stuff way way more dense and strong than ice so he doesn't see it as too much of an issue todoroki would tell him that his ice is a little bit more dense than he thinks in which azuka would shrug and say luckily they're on the same side then so maybe they won't even have to figure out who's who's stronger in which they would finally arrive at the usj and they would be ready for their rescue training from pro hero 13. but as all of them would enter it seems like the usj or the training facility would be under siege of villains all alike portals opening up and azuku looks on to see these villains approach but for some reason he gets a read on multiple villains that that become um, or that become obviously the main threats it's as if this aura emits off of them and azuku can tell exactly that they are the main threats being that of shigaraki kirogiri and the nomu he knows immediately through his senses through his spartan quirk that these right here are the strongest and these right here are the ones that are either pulling the strings or leading the forefront of this invasion the heroes or the future heroes with aizawa and pro hero 13 are gonna have to fend off the invasion of the league of villains but that is for the next part of what if deku had a spartan quirk and if you enjoyed show some love leave a like leave a sub leave a comment down below all that good stuff i hope you all enjoyed the video and if you want to see more, please show some love and please, please support the channel to your best of your ability by just leaving a like and commenting on the video. All of that helps massively. Of course, there's other ways to support the channel through like memberships and stuff like that. But of course, that is not mandatory by any means. Just supporting the channel by watching the video um, in its entirety and all that stuff helps more than you could possibly imagine. I appreciate all you guys and all the support. I hope everyone that's watching has an amazing day. Later.